Welcome back. It is day three of Air India pilot strike that has severely crippled the airline's operations across the country. Now, despite the Delhi High Court pulling them up, the issue issuing contempt notices, the pilots are in no mood to relent. Air India, in fact, has stopped taking domestic bookings for the next few days after more pilots joined in the strike. Uh, now, and as of now, the standoff continues. The bigger issue, however, seems to be lost. Hardest hit are the passengers, the taxpayers who actually finance the airline. Now, Air India has announced a drastic cut its, in its domestic operations. Only 12 out of 56 flights are operating out of Mumbai today, while 15 out of 66 flights were operating out of Delhi. Well, meanwhile, 20 flights from Chennai alone were cancelled yesterday because of the unrest within Air India between the pilots and the management. This a day after Air India sacked six pilots and de-recognized their association. Yesterday, 25 executive pilots from Delhi, 32 from Mumbai and around 20 from Chennai called in sick as well, escalating the crisis on the hands of Air India. Well, in some more shocking developments, uh, former Sri Lankan cricket team captain Hasan Tilak Ratne has made a sensational revelation that match-fixing has been common in Sri Lankan cricket. Not just that, he says he will even reveal the names in the future. He didn't exactly mean that Sri Lanka's last match, which was the World Cup final versus India, was fixed, but asks why players were changed for the finals. According to him, match fixing isn't anything new in Sri Lanka. In fact, it's been happening, according to him, since the year 1992. Well, Tilak said, and I quote, there were threats of this issue being exposed earlier, but was pushed down by giving money to various people. I state with great responsibility that I will reveal the names of those involved, unquote. Well, in more national updates now, the BJP leader Yashwan Sinha has uh, clarified Murli Manohar Joshi's uh, walkout from the Public Accounts uh, Committee meeting yesterday, showing the PAC rulebook. Now, just to give you a recap on this uh, latest controversy over Parliament's Public Accounts Committee's report on the 2G spectrum scam, yesterday, 11 of the 21 members belonging to the UPA rejected the report, accusing the chairman, Dr. Murli Manohar Joshi, of acting on a hidden agenda and trying to destabilize the government. Now, senior BJP leader Arun Jaitley has told NDTV that UPA has tried to scuttle the probe. Yashwan Sinha on his part said that Murli Manohar Joshi is entitled to a walkout. Well, a Gujarat IPS officer who testified against the Chief Minister Narendra Modi in the riots case has appealed to the Supreme Court, saying that his family and him are not being given protection despite serious security threats following his deposition to the SIT over the 2002 riots. The officer Sanjeev Bhatt said that he has faced untoward incidents after he spoke up against the Modi government. And well, news coming in from London. It's late afternoon right now and in the latest coming in. As the reception winds down in Buckingham Palace, the members of English royalty are departing. Over 300 of them are likely to feature again in a dinner party that will be hosted by Prince Charles. Now, early in a refreshing break from traditional English gloomy weather, today the sun parted the clouds and shined bright on the newlyweds, almost as a gift from the heavens. And millions over the world witnessed on their TV screens the first kiss between the newlyweds Prince William and Catherine Middleton, who now have been endowed with the titles of Dutch and Duchess of Cambridge. Now, the couple tied the knot at the Abbey and returned to Buckingham Palace in an open horse-drawn carriage, even as massive crowds cheered on the newlyweds. The reception was hosted in the palace by Queen Elizabeth II, the reception boasted of an eight-tier wedding cake and over 10,000 dishes prepared by 21 chefs. As for commoners, well, billions watched over television screens and the world over, and thousands watched on on big screens erected in Trafalgar Square and the Hyde Park. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all mankind, giver of all spirit. And while well, moving ahead, even as Rajni Khan gets set to tell his fans about his latest project, Rana, call us and well, join us in wishing the superstar the best for his new project.